Hello friends. With many reenactment events, festivals, and fairs announcing the cancellation of their seasons, my favorite East Coast Renaissance fairs have not yet announced closures, so I have decided to persevere with my costume. There is one main component missing, so I decided I should stop distracting myself with cute history-bounding clothes and just knock it out since I had most of the materials on hand anyway. A while ago, I made myself a copy of a pattern from the Tudor Tailor, which lays out the shape and boning placement for a pair of Tudor bodies, one of the earliest corset-like garments in Western clothing. I decided to use this pattern as the basis of my garment. So, the first step was to scale it up to human size on some grid paper. I decided not to fully bone it, as this is a costume and I don't have any boning materials. However, I decided that to keep the integrity of the low front point shape, that I should have some kind of busk. So I ordered one from Red Threaded, and it arrived very swiftly. I'll link it in the description. After I had my pattern, I made my mock-up. I had a sneaking suspicion that my pattern was slightly too big. Even just holding the paper up to my body, I saw that the strap placement, for example, was way too far out. Whether my proportions are just a little odd to the standard of the pattern, or I overestimated my measurements because I'm used to including seam allowance or wiggle room, uh, who knows. But most of my sewn garments aren't as fitted as this bodice needs to be. Ideally, I should have cut it to my exact measurements with no seam allowance, so it would be fitted with a slight gap in the back when laced. Trying on the mock-up, it's obvious that the first attempt is far too big as suspected. I do wonder if I didn't accidentally draw the arm's eye room out too much on both sides instead of dividing it in half, because there's way too much room under the arm. This is also my body shape as well, as my torso is actually quite narrow, but needs a little extra space for the bust in the front. I decided to take a few inches out from the underarm, but then I got worried because I'm not using full boning for support on the bust, so I decided to try adding a bust gore. Now, bust gores are not really seen in support garments until I believe the early 19th century, but I got worried about bust squish. And a somewhat flattened chest is appropriate for this period to give a smooth and conical shape to the torso. But again, this is for the Renaissance Fair and most women don't recreate that aspect of the silhouette at these festivals. Surprisingly or not, far more common is women wearing something more like modern couture or 19th century steel bone corsets with minimal undergarments that they use to create a kind of boob shelf. So I'll be honest, vanity is at play here. I don't want to look like a chestless nerd next to them. I was wrong though. Once I took out the extra width, it became apparent that the bus scores were pretty useless when I tried on the mock-up again. I did need to trim the length a little bit because I'm very short-waisted and my mock-up was curling slightly at my natural waist. When I try it on with the bum roll under and my skirt, you can see that the Elizabethan shape is starting to form. Though I do wonder if I should add another pleated petticoat or a small farthingale underneath the skirt to give it a better overall shape. Even without the bum roll, the heavily pleated skirt combined with my natural pear shape does still provide a nice fullness so I could go without the bum roll on a particularly hot day. The second mock-up has gotten us almost there. Should I cut it with regular scissors? No, let's use my leather snips. I'm not just a pure slave to aesthetics. My scissors are actually going dull and this is quite a thick fabric, so let's say there's a practical reason for this too. I probably should have done a mock-up out of the canvas because the thinner cotton of my mock-up was a bit challenging 
because it behaves much differently than the stiffer canvas I'll be actually using. I felt worried about wasting my canvas though, but then I realized that I'm a fool once I unfolded the fabric that I had because I realized I had two yards of 59 inch wide canvas. This bodice uses maybe half a yard, probably less. But now I have a lot of leftover stiff and sturdy fabric I can use for mocking up or making other support garments like some future stays and corsets that I'm not saying are going to happen, but might be happening. Alas, I backstitched my three main pieces together and then before I put in any sort of lining or busk, I added the lacing grommets. Would a late 16th to early 17th century lady have metal grommets in her bodice? No. Metal grommets are 19th and early 20th century. But I believe a 19th century corset may be in my nearish future, and I like the look of metal grommets. I'll be honest, I am nothing if not aesthetic. And these historically would have been handbound eyelets. I hate hand-binding eyelets. <laughs> so I use this as an excuse to teach myself how to use a hand grommet setter. The fabric hole punch that came with this little kit was next to useless. So instead, I used my awl to poke through the fabric and then I snipped out some of the threads. This isn't as clean a look because you can still see some stray threads once I set the grommet, but there are definitely better quality proper fabric punches used by professional corset makers. This is a quick and dirty solution using an inexpensive at-home kit, not fully professional tools, which I may upgrade to in the future, depending on my needs. I'm also going to take this moment while you watch me set grommets to make a quick note about historical accuracy. As I've mentioned in some of the previous episodes of this costume series, I love the Renaissance Fair. It was my first foray into historical costuming and cosplay. However, if you've ever been to a Ren Fair, you'll know that historical accuracy is often not the goal. Even among many of the people working there, the clothing is a mashup of several decades, fantasy, counterculture, new age, etc., which creates a unique style and culture that belongs to the fair, and each fair varies slightly in that culture. So, with that in mind, I'm creating an outfit that is inspired by some Tudor era garments and silhouette, but it is adapted to be a fun wenchy festival costume rather than a historical recreation. It's a great way to learn some techniques I'll need for later projects and use what I have instead of worrying about buying a lot of supplies. I did actually draw up a sketch of what my outfit would look like if it was done as a completely historical garment, you know, made for an upstart merchant class woman, my favorite class of people historically. And maybe I'll share that when I do a dressing video showing my complete accessorized outfit for the fair. So you can kind of compare the costume versus the history. I used the torso piece of my mock-up after removing the foolish bust gores and stitched it into the canvas as a way to both cover the inner seams and a way to place the busk without having to stitch the busk casing to the outer fabric so it gives like a nice floating look. All that was really left at this point was to bind all the edges, but I didn't have any binding tape, so I ordered some online from the only place that seemed to have any in a color that would vaguely work for my project. But my package did not arrive. 
I called the post office and they said it was misdelivered to our neighbor's house and they would collect and re-deliver it. As of Tuesday, June 2nd, the day before this video goes out, this hasn't happened yet. So I'm working with the bodice as is. Trying it on now with the proper fabric. The fit is much better, but I do feel like there's some slouching. Though I did have to lace myself in since my husband had to go back to work this week, which may have also caused some of that. I wondered if I needed to add some boning, actually, to reinforce the back lacing panels. I also decided that maybe I should add some straps to this project. The original design had straps, but they just weren't placed correctly for me, so I went without them. Having some time now that I wouldn't be doing binding for this video, I decided to reinvest that time in making pauldron-like straps that are adjustable. Adjustable because it makes it more versatile, but also because this bodice has just become an excuse for me to set grommets as much as possible. So after setting about 16 more grommets, four on the front of the bodice, four on the back, and then four on each strap, I tied it on again. Now the straps will also benefit from reinforcement of proper binding because they, they wanna fold in a little bit. Um, so I might need to add an extra layer to them as well. But they actually do help pull the back up of the bodice and help it sit at the proper level so I'm not getting as much slouching. I'm pretty satisfied with the work I was able to do on this project, but it is the first time I'm not showing you guys a completed project just because my materials weren't here in time. And it is a little bit frustrating, but it just gives me a chance to show you more of this project later. I would love to do a full video showing you dressing in the complete outfit with all the accessories I am gathering and making, and hopefully it'll be a video of me preparing to go to the fair this year. But if not, there's nothing stopping us from dressing up, having a fire pit, a bottle of wine, and some friends over as lockdown lifts later this summer. We'll make our own fair. Well, friends, I'll be back in a little over a week with a more modern project, but I have some more costume and history bounding content coming up soon. So please let me know what events you're hoping to attend this year. And if you enjoyed this, please subscribe to see more. Bye.